Did we make it? Are we back? That's a Back to the Future quote. My name is the vote, Brad Gilmore. Welcome to the First Class League, a postseason recap behind the scenes special. We're going to be talking about some of our favorite moments, matches, and personalities throughout the entirety of the first season of FCL. Hope you enjoyed the, the special last week. If you do have a question for any of us, please just send it on over through the Twitch channel. However, you want to send that over. But we're going to give a couple shout outs to the people who are joining me on this illustrious broadcast. First, my ace. My, uh, uh, what, what, what's like a good comparison? I can't think of one, but my everything. How about that? My everything. Yes. <laughs> Steph Sabra's in the house. Like it couldn't have gotten, I was like, what is he going to go with? And then you went with like the ultimate. <laughs> yes. So you glad know, you're back, Bo. We missed you. I, you know, I missed you all. Of course. Uh, we have some beef stuff that we have to discuss here in a minute. Well, I've already put you on blast privately, but I'm thinking about doing it publicly, or maybe I should, I don't know. We can um, it out. Also joining us, uh, the producer, one of the producers of the first class league, the head question writer. His name is Plud P to the L to the D Paul Lawrence Denuzio. How are you doing, Paul? Doing good. Are you going to guess? I'd like to see that every week. You just guess a different name until you finally figure out what it actually stands for. It's going to be but like that's... it's going to be like some really unexpected, like Lily, like Paul. Looper? Lily. Is it Looper? Looper is a good choice. It's not, Lillian. but it's a good choice. Lillian. Paul Lillian. Lillian. That's it. You got it, Brad. You you finally won. Well, it's good to see you guys. Good to see you guys here. And of course, the man that makes everything work. His name is Burke Maid. Dwayne Burke, what's going on, ma'am? What is going on? We're uh, this is this is going to be a little bit different from last week, but you you missed last week. So, uh, what what did you think of warfare? Since we didn't get your your thoughts, you yeah, here last week. So, well, I, thought, I thought it sucked. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I thought it was great. I thought warfare was awesome. Of course, I, there's some things that we actually in the behind the scenes special didn't even behind the scenes fully say. Do you know what I mean? And that I guess. Before we get, we, we're going to have a special guest joining us here uh, momentarily, the closer, Andrew Furtado, uh, known on the Twitter and the social media sphere as Andrew Furtaco. And when you think about the logistics of a fur taco, it's not a good thing to think about, to be honest with you. It's like, I think, eating the skin of a kiwi. Does anyone do that? No. I have never done that. <laughs> Who would do that? <laughs> I don't know. When I think of a fur taco, I think of... The skin of a kiwi, like the this hairy. This is the skin of a killer, Bella. Must be the same man who drinks one quarter of a monster all the, in like eight, yeah. ten hours. Have y'all ever? Th Never mind. I was about to go way down the rabbit hole. We don't need to go that way. Um, <laughs> kiwi Furtado is going to be joining us here in a moment. Uh, we're going to talk to him. But there was some behind the scenes stuff that I thought that we should have gotten to last week that I wasn't here for, and sh I, I feel like I should say some of it. Should we? Should we talk about it? Definitely. Absolutely, Brad. Pull, pull the curtain back. So here's the thing. Uh, let, let's start at the beginning. I want to start at the beginning. When I got the phone call from Christian Harloff to start this league, I said yes immediately without thinking about the undertaking that I was about to have. And then I started thinking about, he came to me and said, who you want on the team? And he had some suggestions and we were talking. Now I, would all, I was already working with Paul Denuzio on the show with um, Jen, which I completely forgot the name of it until earlier Coming today. Coming up next. When, when Dwayne told me coming up next. So I said, I said, I want uh, Paul on the team. Cause I know that he, he and I will work well together and, and he knows how I work. And God bless him. And then the second name I went to was Dwayne. I said, I need Dwayne. I need Dwayne Burke. Cause as far as look, if there's anybody who deserves a multitude of credit for this league and for all things in Schmodown related territory, Dwayne needs his flowers right now, all day. Every day. That's not the applause button. I try to give you an applause button, but that's not, that was not there. I don't know more than Bill and Ted. Rock out. <laughs> because Wayne. <laughs> did not mean that one either. But Dwayne <laughs> makes it all happen. He really, he really does. Sorry, guys. Um, what is that one? Like, That's like I mean, Michael Myers at a disco. I mean, yeah, I like it. And then the original here was the other thing is Christian said you should use Steph Sabra 
And I did not know Steph. I had never talked to Steph. I had never met Steph ever, right? We had never met, right? No, we never talked. And you had just become friends with Roxy, like just. Like, like friend friends, like to where Roxy and I would talk all the time and things like that. And, but I'd never met you. And I said, okay, yeah, Steph, Steph sounds cool. I'll take your recommendation for it. But it was only supposed to be in a limited capacity. Like it was supposed to be Steph does post-match interviews only, right? And then we were going to have someone else be like the, the Mark Ellis to my Christian Harlaw, right? And that was going to be David Moore. Uh, and David was going to be, a, he was a great suggestion. But he had like a lot of scheduling conflicts and things like that. And then I think we were like, oh, man, I don't think he, he couldn't commit to it fully. But Steph was on to do the post-match stuff. And then I said to Paul, why didn't she just there for the whole time instead of just sitting? Because, Steph, you know, you know what it's like to do these post-match interviews in the digital sphere. Um, yeah. I'm going to do a few of them. It's kind of a really odd thing. Because you're just sitting there watching the whole match behind the scenes. You can't say anything. You can't do anything. No, uh, you're, you can't even, like, pop in the chat because it's just, like, weird. It's just a weird – I love it, but it is a weird – it is weird. It's odd. It's odd to sit there. Um, so I said, well, why should she just sit there? Let's just have her do the, the whole thing. <laughs> right? And then it was only supposed to be, though. Paul, right for a week at a time we were gonna have a different yeah we had a lot of names we were tossing about here and there and then my was was pushing was gonna do stuff um i can't remember everybody mark ellis even said he was gonna come down and do some matches with me things like we're that. gonna try warfather once or twice we were talking warfather about there was gonna be one it was gonna be somebody different every single week and then we did a um dress rehearsal before the first show which was a great idea Whoever came up with that one, I think Dwayne. I think, probably Dwayne. Dwayne. I think Dwayne was like, "We need to try this out first. And Steph, <laughs> I think that we—that was the first time we met. Was in yeah. the dress rehearsal. That's right. That's right. What yeah, do you remember first about time the ever. What do you remember about it, Steph? I remember being because I had just been introduced to MTS. So, like, when you're introduced to a league that had seven seasons prior, and I had watched like some of the main events the year before, but not as integrated with everything going on. It's a lot. It's like a little overwhelming because like the fans are so invested, which I love about it. But if you mess up or say something wrong, it's like stressful because you're trying to get your bearings on the rules and everything. And the first match we did, I messed up pretty badly in round, round two. And I was like, fuck. I don't know if this is going to work. Like, I don't know if they're going to like me on this. And that, but I instantly think was because Brad, you're like from the outside, so proper. And like this, like, you know, like handsome, tall dude that works in sports. So I was like, okay, is he going to be like kind of a dick? But then you have like, you have white boy swag to the utmost. So I was like, oh my God, this is the first person who's recognized any of my references ever on air. And then it was just like a match made in heaven for broadcasting. Yeah. No, I remember. And Paul, Paul, I want to ask you this. I remember in the dress rehearsal, I think I may have said it to Paul afterward, but I was like, I love Steph. I think this is like, I think we should just keep going like this because again, we had such a natural back and forth. I think that we were talking about like Nelly's Air Force One, yeah. something like that. And was, wait, right, Paul? Didn't we have that conversation? Absolutely. So I had no idea what you guys were talking about because I do not have that white boy swag. I'm very much not in that realm. But I got the call afterwards and, and Brad was like, oh my God, she is amazing. Why are we even looking at anybody else at this point? I, was, I, I don't know. I think she's great too. And because you guys had just, just perfect chemistry together, it was just easy to go with. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Like, it was. It's it's really weird because there's so many great people in the space that you work with. And as a host, like, you know, it is you can be on air with people. And if you're a good host, you can talk to anyone. But when you find someone that you can actually groove with, it's a completely different feeling. I, I felt like the exact same way. And now Brad and I are like, how do we work together more? <laughs> so we're yeah. working that out now. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, you, you were talked up to me by Roxy. 
like rocks you're like you're gonna really love working with Steph and I think that she did the same to you right yeah yeah yes she was like Brad's the nicest guy I've ever met like a hundred percent I can't believe that he's as great as he is I couldn't believe it and I was like okay let's see <laughs> yeah yeah Roxy will talk you up there um but anyway so that that's what was kind of the genesis of, mm -hmm. of this formation of this foursome and then we rocked these 31 shows together for the most part all of us were at every show mainly Dwayne was at everything Dwayne had like he had to be here <laughs> um, but everyone else was kind of if and out. Now, the other thing, and we're going to bring in our, our guest here in a moment, because I have a lot of stories about this, man. <laughs> uh, for better or for worse. <laughs> but, why not, speaking of warfare, Paul, there were two other, and I, I think Steph knows this, maybe Dwayne. I, Dwayne, I think, knows this, though. But there was two other planned main events, opponents-wise, or is the flirt and flouse, if you remember, Paul? We had a couple of, of discussions and things we were trying to throw out there. And see what the Twitch channel thinks about this, because the original opponent, and it was going to be like for a shoot at first, the next opponent for flouse was going to be legit Booker T. Like Booker was going to come and do the, the match. Right. He and I talked about it a little bit, and he was down. And then we thought, okay, maybe Booker doesn't do the match. Maybe he says he's going to do the match. And then we pull the, the old switcheroo with Travis, which is what I ended up doing, right? right? But the first person that was going to face the flirt and flouse, and we had discussions and we just couldn't get a date locked in, was going to be the flirt and flouse defending the FCL championship against Chris Jericho. Oh my gosh. That was going to be the match. And we just couldn't get the dates to line up because we started this like the flirt and flouse thing right as live shows started happening again. And Jericho's a wrestler and a rock star. So he was playing concerts and doing AEW every week. And we just couldn't get the, uh, couldn't get it. But that would have been fun, Steph. That would have been in, uh, insane. I knew about Booker T, which I'm still hoping we can get him in any capacity over here. But I had no idea about the Jericho match. That would have been insane. Just that would have been insane. Swagger alone. Swagger alone. Yeah. Girl. That would have been like a massive face-off between those two. Yeah. That would have been fun, Paul. Verbally alone, that would have been a great face-off between those two. <laughs> Yeah, Did anyone else realize that the flirt and flouse, also known as uh, I'm breaking the fourth wall here, also known as Brett uh, uh, Sheraton. Uh, did anyone else notice that he got so into the match he lost his accent? Yes, <laughs> he did. He said it afterwards. He sent me a message. He DM'd me. He was like, "I realized that I think I got really intense, and I think I really got into it. I kind of forgot what I was doing." Like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh well, it happens." <laughs> Yeah. That must be so hard to earnestly search your brain for trivia and then have to report out with a German accent. For an hour, like for a whole thing. Like for a as whole hour. You know, There's German continues. pop star accent. Yeah, yeah, that's... I mean, he had no problem. I remember when we, back in the day when Zafler and Flaus first uh, first came to being for FCL, uh, called Action, we had him on as a guest on Chilled Action for a full hour in character. And we were throwing all sorts of things at him. And he had a hard enough time. He's like, I could, I could barely say the character for a full hour. It was just like the five minute bits on like, you know, on SCN or whatever, 10 minute bits here and there. The full hour was tough. Then you have to ask him to like actually recall trivia knowledge while he's trying to do it. Uh, I give him a lot of credit though. <laughs> but he was so great in character, even if he lost his accent momentarily. Um, he's kind of like Wanda Maximoff. Of of the you know, there you go. <laughs> all of a sudden the accent goes away and we Savage. Pretend. Savage, we, we, Brad. Thank you. Um, but one of the guys who didn't have to worry about an accent, but always had to worry about staying in character was somebody who when I saw his promo for his first match, I did not know a lot about him, but when I saw the promo, um, I even remember Christian texting me and saying, Who is that? That guy's promo was great. You know, and I was like, Yeah, he definitely gets it. And let's bring him on right now. He is known and loved by many 
his name is Andrew Furtado, the closer. Andrew, what's going on, man? No, known by many, hated by most. And I feel like that's the, <laughs> that's the place I want to be. Oh, man. Hey, well, first off, shout out to you for being – you're, you're a part of history with Steph and I. Uh, the was this the I think this is the first time three people called an FCL match, right? This was the first. Oh yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, absolutely. How was that experience for you, Andrew? Oh man, it was a dream. It was a dream come true. I I I, I feel like it would have been a little more fun uh, if the person I was saying is the greatest man in the world did a little bit better. <laughs> but, <laughs> but overall, I mean, it was a lot of fun to just be because over the whole season, both Brad and Steph, we we've, we've all created this kind of uh, storyline between the three of us where uh, we had this whole side story going back and forth where Brad, I watched back, you were mean. <laughs> was I Andrew, mean? You were, you were the one and only person who sassed me and I'll never forget it. It was like the funniest <laughs> thing ever because at first, it was my first introduction to you. So I couldn't tell. I was like, I can't tell. And we didn't get to talk before. So I'm like, is this him? Because I'm going to like poison one of your candies that you eat. <laughs> oh, and I, I don't, uh, I don't know if you remember this immediately after that first match where we, where I did that, I apologized almost immediately. <laughs> no. And then you said your wife, your wife left the room too, or something like that. What did you say? I don't remember. Oh man. I, it was, it was, it was very similar of the lines of like, I'm talking. So stop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was hilarious it was hilarious and i remember thinking oh andrew's not gonna pull any punches this season okay i like that i like that yeah this um, so, go ahead andrew i was gonna say this whole this whole season everyone that i've played against and played with um the first thing i told them every time i was like it doesn't matter the outcome i want this match to be the main event I will throw myself on a pile of burning bricks to make it the best thing ever. So I don't care what we do. Let's do it. If you need me to like with John Knight, I was like, if you need me to send you my awful headshot from 12 years ago as a, as a get, as a gag, I'll send you 10 of them. I don't give it, I don't care. Let's just have fun. Let's just make this thing weird. And let's just, let's just make it the most fun for everybody to watch. Cause God knows I'm not the best at trivia. <laughs> that is the way to do it. You, you, Oh, no, I know, but under under pressure, uh, everything disappears. (laughs) Well, I remember in the the match that you had with Travis Fishburne, I'm going to be completely honest with you, Andrew, we were really rooting for you to lose. (laughs) Like, as a team, team, we're like, please lose, because Travis is so awesome, and we would nail everything with him. So it's okay for you to lose. But do you know how nervous you made all of us? By how well you played in that match, like I was like, I was thinking in my head, I'm, this is what Christian felt when 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 Andrew uh, Guy beat Dan Merle. This is what's going on. Oh no, yeah. Oh, the best part was that wasn't the he first time you were like, uh, oh. Andrew. Not gonna lie, I had a great story. If you lost, <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was the end. Like it was getting closer and closer. And there's a part of me that like it was kind of like it felt like Rocky and Rocky in Rocky Four. Like I kind of almost I wanted Fishburne to win because that was our storyline moving forward. But as it got closer, I was like I started chanting for Tato in my head. I'm like the little engine that could I was like watch him win, do it, holy crap, he's gonna do it. Let's see. Well, Fishburne is cut, and it's a bad cut. <laughs> it ruins our storyline, but hey, let's see where it goes. Let's go with chaos at this point. But Andrew, in my opinion, and I'm sure Dwayne and Steph and PLD would would uh, echo this. And by the way, shout out to Quick Strike True for subscribing um, to the channel. But you took the you were the first one or one of the first ones that took the character stuff in the FCL to the next level. You would send ideas. You would make your own promos with John. Think about the stories throughout. You would call me, and we would talk for like an hour. Uh, about different things that, that you had ideas that you had um where like why do you did you like commit so hard to the character like i mean i appreciate it but i'm saying where where did that come from why did you why did you feel like that was important for you to do well 
I, I totally feel like all of us are here for many reasons. We love movie trivia, and we also most of us love wrestling. And that was the most fun thing when I was a kid was coming up with stupid characters that I could be. Because just like trivia, when I when I was wrestling, I used to wrestle with, with my friends in, in high school and middle school. Um, I was never the best wrestler, but I always wanted to be the best at something. And I was like, if I'm going to be, the, if I'm going to be anything, I've got to be the loudest mouth. I've got to have the most character. I've got to dedicate myself because those are the, those are the people who I always uh, associated myself with when I was watch wrestling, like Roddy, Roddy Piper, uh, Randy Savage, the Jimmy Hart, the mouth from the South, like all that stuff. Like I wanted to be just as bad on the mic as I was uh, in the ring. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, and, and being, being mean is always so fun for anyone, uh, who I think, uh, I went on one of the, uh, after shows, I went on one of them and they, uh, they asked me to make fun of them all one by one. And I told, I told one of them, I'm like, I can't make fun of you. It'd be like pistol whipping a blind kid. And <laughs> And that's something that, like, I just, I'll never say that to pers a person in public, but that is the <laughs> most, and just like, under the right context, that's exactly the right reaction. Uh... Wait, Andrew, first of all, legendary, I love, I love, a, I love a good comeback. Second of all, I feel like the actors who play villains are often the nicest people off camera. Are you like what part of your out of camera life of, like relates? Are you mean at all? Like, do you say any? Like, do you talk shit to your kids ever? Like, where does it end? Oh man, uh, I've got three dogs, and they all have different voices uh, in my brain. So we have lots of very quick back and forth. And as crazy as crazy as it sounds, I feel like it doesn't sound as crazy anymore now with COVID. Everyone's been home yeah. for so long, but. Uh, yeah, my sister, my sister and I would always like try to be the meanest to each other, uh, and that was always that was the one outlet. Other than that, I was raised, you know, to be respectful to everybody because you, even even if the person is an asshole, it doesn't mean that you need to be that way back. You need to be your best self always and forever. But the minute you put a camera on, on me and tell me to be a jerk, I, I will take that opportunity and just get all of that stuff out there. Uh, just for fun and it's just I've always very much been that person who I'm very lucky with my very unintimidating face to be able to say such terrible things and get away with it because there's no there's you can tell yeah. it's all in goodwill and, and and it's not at all like something you should take serious uh, and so I've always pushed the boundaries of like meeting people for the first time and and tried to make like my first impression. If it's not going to be you know a, a friendship, I want to at least you know that person to go. You know that was a that guy at least knew how to have he was funny. And that's yeah. all that's all I can really hope for. And nothing makes uh, people laugh, strangers laugh harder than um, you either. Pistol whipping a blind kid. Yeah, pistol whipping <laughs> a blind kid. Nothing's funnier than that. It's true. What I love about it, too, is like sometimes the audience doesn't get that concept sometimes as far as that goes. Because I think some of our audience love the trivia. They don't, aren't as well versed on the wrestling side of it. I mean, you came after me uh, a few times. Especially right at the beginning was like the Kevin Smith questions or something like that. I, and you came at me. You were throwing me under the bus and everything else. And I people like text me going, are you okay with that? I was like, he's really going after you. I'm like, I had to tell him, like, we're DMing each other right now, laughing our asses off at the whole thing. It was so much fun back and forth we were having with him. I, it was so great. I mean, like, what I loved about it especially is because you would take things that happened in the match, uh, and you knew that you could, even if it was a, a bad thing for you match-wise as far as knowledge goes, mm -hmm. you could use it to, to make the show better. So, like, the Kevin Smith thing, you're like, you know, you, gotta, you better put Kevin Smith in the wheel next time. You better get like that. I put a Kevin Smith question in round one, and you so went with it. Like, as soon as I put a round one in there, I didn't tell you about it. You, I saw your face light up, and you're like, "I gotta use this and sing it." It's just what you did. It was great. It was great. Yeah, I, I used to work on a radio show, a podcast for this comedian, and um, he was always very much in doing bits, doing gags, doing things, and always in and out. And I was always ready to do it 
and I always dedicated myself so hard to the bit that he felt bad and nicknamed me sensitive on the show because he felt bad for me being always down to do the bit and like playing the sympathetic. And uh, so I've always been very much so dedicated to the bit, no matter no matter who's who comes out on top or not. That, that definitely and, comes through. That, de- that definitely comes through. Uh, I want to give Dwayne a, a moment to, to, to talk about uh, any question that you had for for Todd or Dwayne. Uh, no, I was just going to say, like, it's it's a very um, familiar feeling for me because, like, I, I tell people all the time, like, if you want to come for me, I was raised in an inner city lunch, like, around the inner city <laughs> lunch table. Like, if you want to come at me, like, you better not miss because I, I've got those quips that cut to the bone and will, like, hurt your soul. But, like, <laughs> and, and I'm not going to apologize for it because you started it. You know, and and at the end of the day, like we gotta, like if me and if me and you are going back and forth, I think at the end of the day we would both be like, hey, it's all good. Like, yeah, it, it's yeah. Awesome I, like, I like how Dwayne yeah, like, is just like, if you come from me, I will break you. I will break <laughs> you. But it's it's a it's a very Girl, like, but it's a very it's it's also very much a wrestling mentality. It's like, hey, yeah. anything that happens out there in the ring, say whatever you want. Yeah, you know, like. It, and I'm not gonna warn you that it's coming. You don't warn me that it's coming. React, shoot back, and when we get back behind the curtain, like we're all good. Fear. And, yeah. and that's like the thing that I love. Like, um, like we're gonna play my favorite match of the year after this, and my favorite match of the year is you and John. And it's not necessarily because of the match itself, but because of everything that happened leading up to the match. And I think that that was when we really showed that, you know digital storytelling is we're capable of it. it it's yeah. not this like death knell that has been you know moaned about for the past year and a half like you can do well told stories digitally and make it happen and make it engaging and that's because of you as as well as john yeah. but you've john. done it in every single story that you've been a part of every well, single thank one. you so, thank you for <laughs> thank you for saying that and for picking that match um uh, for anyone who did not know, my computer really did set itself on fire. <laughs> and that was a real thing. And uh, my wife, the first thing, as soon as the fire was out, she's like, you better use that in your story. Because <laughs> that's amazing. Well, that's a true staple of the FCL this year. We're taking things that actually happened and like using them as far yeah. as the advanced story. Yeah, well, like, like um, you, you, you all will remember, uh, I, don't, I don't think, Andrew, you were part of the, of the call that day. Maybe you were, but David Jindoyan was supposed to play his first match and legit his power went out in his apartment and he had yeah. no internet connection. And Shimo was just sitting there in the waiting room after <laughs> losing his match uh, earlier. And we were like, uh, hey, ma'am, <laughs> can you stick around? and play this match for us uh, at the sure, same time that created a storyline for Jindorian, Jindorian to, to continue throughout the rest of the whole season and it made Shimo look like an absolute demon Yeah, like he came back and won that second match and then he became a threat and now he has a syndicate <laughs> that was literally and, and even the syndicate thing was he just that was an offline in a promo he was like like a sinister syndicate and it wasn't even supposed to be anything and I was like Hey, and I remember asking him, I remember being like, so who's in the syndicate? <laughs> he was like, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, it sounds good to me. Uh, so let's run with it. So, Andrew, before before we let you go, we just wanted to kind of have you on here and highlight because you are one of the best characters, if not the best character we've Thank had you. in the league this season. My question for you is this. We're about to talk about this ourselves. So give me your favorite match of yours, your favorite moment, and who you think the best character is aside from yourself. Man, so my favorite match of mine is definitely the one with me and John Knight. I feel like that um, – I don't think people understand, like, this – so that right before, like, like Dwayne was talking about the Twitter takeover, that I don't even know if everyone even paid attention to it. But um, that was something that we, like, joked about, him and I, and then he went on and did it and didn't tell me how it was all going down. And so when it started going down I and seeing everybody retweeting it and sharing and say, put copying and pasting the same thing. And like, it blew me away. 
even after all the buildup and all that stuff, I was still like, oh my God, this match is going to be amazing. And I'm like, I'm in it. And I know it's like, this is, this isn't a right, this is, this is insane. And John was just an absolute like legend the entire time we, we were talking like back and forth, just constantly coming up with things and, and everything that led up to that match, all the gags that we had set for during the match and keeping it interesting and, and how we could, how we could continue like the storyline afterwards, like, it, it was the highlight of my whole time, I think, in the FCL. And now that I know I made PLD uh, extremely nervous <laughs> going up against Fishburn, uh, it's, it's still even better than that, is, uh, is John Knight as, as my competitor. And then I think my favorite match of all moment is, is Nick cementing that conversation starter with the flirting flirt and flouse just coming in and, and being the champion and blowing like not blowing people away, pissing everybody off. Yeah. Everybody. And people like me, who, not like that. I was, it, it became the most talked about thing of the FCL as it should have been. It made the, it made the race for the belt, the most intense thing ever. And you want to see somebody good, take it. No offense, uh, Mr. Flaus, you're the amazing, but they wanted a real champion. And the fact that somebody came in out of nowhere with a five and O record and took it like felt great. And then even losing to him made me feel a little bit more legitimate, like right before that. So it, it, like that created that story and it just created the whole season. I cannot imagine where the season would have gone if anything went differently. And like, it felt like the minute you think season one, that's something that's going to shake the, shake the thing. It made us uh, like, like Dwayne was saying uh, a force to be reckoned with. This isn't just an online show. This is, this is an online network. This is a whole, this is a, a sinister syndicate in and of itself. Um, <laughs> And then for character stuff, everyone this whole season was pretty great. Like everyone, I love the the two Adams brothers just had this whole thing set up like from start to finish. And there were other people who had similar concepts and, and, and things, but no one saw it through quite as strong as that. And they're the only two people who could uh, run in and tackle the other person. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is fact. That is fact. Well, um, Andrew, we're looking forward to whatever deviousness you're up to in season two of the First Class League. Uh, you've been, definitely been an instrumental part of season one and its success. So we appreciate you carving out some time for us of and chatting with us today on our Twitch channel. And again, people can follow you at Andrew for Taco, right? Yeah, it's exactly how it sounds. And you, you nailed it. <laughs> Taco. Andrew for Taco, everybody. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Bye, Andrew. Bye. Take care, Andrew. Bye. That is an interesting individual, and I love him, uh, and I mean that. Hey, we got to talk about our favorite stuff from yeah. the year, okay? And I'm really interested in y'all's list. So I want to start off, since we're talking about characters, let's talk about characters. Everyone go around. We're going to say our third. So we have three, right? So we're going to say our third one first, if we've ranked them. Hopefully y'all have ranked them. Did y'all rank them? Okay. Okay, yeah. you know, this is an audio show, so you know, you know, verbal feedback's good. Uh, yeah, I ran it. Everyone was like, we can't all talk at the same time. <laughs> no, so, uh, um, then Steph, we're gonna talk to you. We're gonna start with you. We're gonna start with characters. Who is your third best character from season one of the FCO? My third best character is Batoglia. I think Batoglio was, we didn't get him for a long time, but when he was here, it was a sick character. Like, he was bringing the Italian mafia realness. You know, the whole, the outfit, his voice, the way he played the game. I was so about it. It was, like, fun, but also a little bit scary because you just didn't know exactly. He was too calm with having all that Italian, like, heat rising and I just lived for it. I miss him in the league. Yeah, Gerald, that's a great one. I didn't even think about Gerald. Spoiler, not on my list. Uh, I didn't even think about him. That was a great one. Uh, Dwayne, who do you have as your number three? Uh, my, my number three is is John Knight. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 I mean, there's a reason that I picked the match that I picked. And on top of just his character work on the show, although I wasn't there, I followed along on social media his showing up to the New York live event in character 
in full gimmick, collector. like full full collector. Like that takes a lo- level of de- dedication that a lot of people in in the league don't have, and that's not a fault. I mean, that's above and beyond. But like that, I think deserves at least number three on my list. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one because John Knight for sure was at the New York Live event in gimmick. Even went to the bar afterward in gimmick the whole night. Uh, until two, three in the morning, this man was wearing a flap jacket around New York, and you know, you probably turned a couple hits, my man. You probably turned yeah. a couple. Uh, John Knight was a good one, though. John Knight's good. Uh, PLD, who do you have as your number three? Is a person who came down from the MT came to the MTS. We only got him for like one match, but I want to see more of him. I loved the Kingsman, Lost Sword. Like when he did his little thing, when he liked that shake thing, <laughs> left and right, he was answering questions and he was trying to like, he went back and forth in the accent. I was fully entertained the entire time and I just couldn't, I was hoping we'd get back more of them. He had some scheduling issues. I hope he can come back at some point. He just entertained the heck out of me. Man, that's another great way. He was hilarious and he was cracking me up behind the scenes. Right. Um, I have this video <laughs> that I sent to Steph, I think. But Steph, you probably remember this. Um, but I just want everyone, can everyone see this? Yeah. This is when we were coming back at a break <laughs> and w- you and I, Steph, were talking about something. I don't remember exactly the context. <laughs> I remember his face was funny because I think you said you were going to make your ass clap or something like that. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I'm feeling so good. I, I've been ready uh, all day for this. I, I look watch like his reaction. First I said, Alexa, yeah. you have to rewatch this entire thing. Are you ready to get You seem embarrassed by this moment, Steph. Yeah, it's like one of those where you're like, maybe not the right, cl- <laughs> maybe not the right crowd to talk about throwing ass. Like you know, like when I'm on SEN and stuff, like people know that about me. Like they know what I'm about. But the, like I, I sat in that for a long time after, and I was like, why did I do that in the first class leak? Like, why did I think I needed to share that to the classy leak? And I thought about it over and over again. It's like one way, you know, that TikTok where you're like, think of a memory and you're like, huh, like that. Like, fuck. <laughs> I didn't have a problem with that. It. it was funny. Uh, I thought it was funny. Um, yeah, no, it's Kingsman's great. My number three, the gentleman, Chris Adams. Mm. Oh, very good cop. Here's a behind the scenes. Chris and Robert. Obviously, I'm fans of theirs here in um, there, you know, in Austin. Good Austin boys. Um, they've been doing great stuff with Cinefanatics for a while. But this is like my wrestling brain here. Chris Adams was also the name of a wrestler back in the '80s in WCCW in Dallas, and his name was the Gentleman Chris Adams, right? And I just was like. Psh- if we already have the name, his name's Chris Adams. Every time I hear his name, I think of the gentleman Chris Adams. Let's just make him the new gentleman Chris Adams. Let's just steal that gimmick. And he had something else that he wanted to do, but I kind of told him, hey, I want you to be the gentleman Chris Adams. And then everything else he ran with, he ran with the look, the the rules of a gentleman, producing his own promos, really trying to be this smarmy, uh, crappy heel and I think he did a really, uh, as they say in the business, a chicken ass heel. And he did a really good job of it, man. And I thought that his commitment, even to losing the facial hair bet with Travis and growing in that pathetic excuse for a mustache uh, that PLD did not approve of, I um, I just thought that he committed. I thought he committed in, in his totality. So that's my number two. Steph, cease the ass throwing momentarily or clapping to the hot girl music. <laughs> and uh yes right? Ron. <laughs> you're very disappointed in yourself for that i'm surprised no uh, never like i i'm not embarrassed at all obviously it's like a daily ritual it's just like it's something you don't need to share out loud to people like, Brene brown talks about it all the time there's oversharing and there's vulnerability that wasn't vulnerability that was oversharing and i, t- I take that <laughs> but well, my 
My second yeah. character pick is Furtado. I thought he was so funny and uh, willing to not pull any punches. And that takes a lot of guts. Like, as someone, like, when you do any character work, for most of us, like, in the back of your head, you're like, do they know that this isn't really me? And you, like, you get a little bit concerned about kind of what you're saying and you hope they don't take it personal. And you can tell with him he's not thinking about that at all. He's, like, totally just committed to it and won't break until after. And that that takes a lot of guts. And he's good at it, too. So I, I really love the way that he pushed everyone's buttons and he's funny. I think that's a great number, two. Uh, who do you have, Dwayne? Uh, for me, for number two, I have the current FCL champion, Travis Fishburne. <clears throat> Travis, that's a great one. Yeah. Um, I I didn't know anything about Travis until his first match. Uh, I did not see the aud- – He's. I think he's the only audition video that I didn't see this season. Uh, so I had no idea what, what was coming into – to this match and then i saw his first promo and i was like this this guy's got it <laughs> especially when post match he he dropped because i think a lot of people don't realize this um he puts on a voice when when he is on on screen that's not what his actual voice sounds like and yeah. and when he dropped the voice i was like whoa <laughs> like that's a completely different person and i was like this is like this is amazing, and like it's such a subtle thing, but it makes such an impact. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I think we talked about it a little bit, but Travis, he didn't even go through the FCL email. Somehow, he found like a direct personal email address of mine, and he sent me just a, 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 a an email with this video that he pre-produced. And I remember sending it to Paul, and I was like, "Get this guy!" Oh no. Well, well, this is my top moment of the year when Brad loses his internet. Oh, there we're back. And I lost internet. And I I hate when you lose it and you're like making an effed up face. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, you know, it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, Who who do you have? Who do you have? Number two, PLD. My number two was a newcomer to the league uh, about halfway through, and we, Dwayne, and I watched this promo together. Just went. Yeah, this guy's in. I don't know how it's going to work, but it's going to work. The flying cow. <laughs> the flying cow just seemed to get it. I don't, he was one of those kind of weird, you a throwback to the old like WWF days, like the 80s and 90s, where they were just big cartoon characters. I wondered if it was going to get annoying after a while, but then he went into his match, and it was one of the things where he just kept going with it. And like his answers were always adding the moves here, adding all those moves left and right. He just stuck to it. It was so committed. And then he, it amps him up even further when he joins a syndicate. It, it's it shouldn't work. Like on paper, this character really shouldn't work, and yet I'm entertained the entire time. Yeah, yeah. Moo was um, the Moo. I just called him the Moo. <laughs> Flying cow was great because when he'd say, "And for all the cows out there, Moo." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what a great commitment. My number two is also Andrew Furtado. Again, just commitment, uh, character. Pistol whipping blind children, um, yeah. you know. Uh, I can't, I can't help but, but like that man. Uh, let's go to number ones around. We'll make this one. We'll make this number ones quick. But Steph, number one for you is number one for me is Shimo. I think Shimo took what he was given and then made so much more, which says a lot about a competitor. And also, I don't think people realize, like, Shima's not scripting out anything he says, but it's, like, it's so well said that you think it should be scripted. He has a way with words that's scary and skillful, and it's really cool hearing him talk, and then you take a sec ba- step back, and you're like, that was kind of frightening. <laughs> and then he's, like, built this entire scary disposition around himself and then made an entire syndicate like we talked about earlier, which I think is like a uh, indication of a really great character that people want to be a part of that. Yeah. I, I, you know what, I'll go ahead and just give you my number one because it's the same. It's James Shimo. Um, again, just a guy who 
you could give him what I love and, and Steph and everybody on here, y'all know from, if you've ever interviewed anybody, when you interview somebody and you just say, so, you know, tell me about the project and they go, yeah, I had a, had a great time. Yeah. So, oh, this is going to be a rough 30 minutes. <laughs> right? But when you go, so tell me about the project. And then they just start flowing and you look down, you're like, man, they're 10 minutes into one question. You know, I'm, I'm, this is going to be easy. I'm coasting. That's James Shimo. I knew I could throw him anything. And like Steph said, it would sound like it was all prepared and scripted and ready to go and just have this beautiful violence to his work. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, really, I really enjoyed. And I thought that again, and Paul, Paul and I know this, it's kind of an inside joke between Paul and I, but he was like, our always our go-to guy. <laughs> like if we had an issue with the schedule, I was like, man, you know who's going to crush it though? If, if he's available, like talk to Shimo, see if Shimo's yeah. available. Shimo, bless you, my man, if you're watching, because he had to be the backup like two or three times, like legit. I don't know if this, if this is going to work. I don't know if this person is going to be able to show up because this is live. Anything can happen. As okay. we know, David Jindoyan's lights going out. And really when Shimo stepped up for that, he became our, hey man, so in case uh, Alex Marzonia can't make it, are you available? My <laughs> professional backup. <laughs> yeah, you're professional backup. And so his character work was great though. So Dwayne, who's your number one? Uh, my, my number one is Andrew. Uh, just for, I mean, for all the reasons everyone's already said, and just like he, not, not just his commitment to the bit, but also his willingness to kind of go above and beyond in the storytelling with like, like David flew out here, um, for a cantina taping and then they took it upon themselves to shoot that one scene with the, the egg carton. And then, like, everything he did with uh, the him and John Knight, like, that promo that they did, a lot of that was edited by Andrew himself. For those of you who don't, don't, don't know, he is an editor. Like, a lot of that was done themselves. And it, it's like, it. I, I still can't get over the John showing up on his TV. Like, that's one of my so favorite, good. favorite moments. So of, good. Of, hey, of tell show. it, <laughs> what a great golden hey tell it to me. john knight john knight by the way um honorable mention for me uh, i just got to give john knight an honorable mention because again can, uh on the gimmick always and some of the things that he would say were, were, were it was really funny to me like in a low-key way like uh, uh teletubby was great and i can't remember all the other ones but he had some real great one line uh uh pld you're number one to finish us off also for Tato, I gotta say it's, it's he's just like everybody said. He's committed to the bit. He would do anything. He's in my DMs all the time, trying to say how can we make the show better? How can I add to the show? How can what can I do? Can I do this? Can I do that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we can do all. Of it. We'll try all. Of it. Also sending naked pictures of himself to you. That too. Well, that's neither here nor there. Uh, that's why he is. Why he got booked in the main event, brother? Yeah, like, okay. you gotta here. do what you gotta do. You know, <laughs> James Schumer, number one. Yeah, I agree, man. He just again his oh his commitment was was through the roof. Let's talk about our moments now. Now my moments list is going to be unconventional in some ways, uh, and some it's 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 you know conventional. Yeah. So, let's talk about your your number three. We're going to start with Steph. Your top okay, three. I want to. This is my number one, but I'm going to say it's my number three because I don't want anyone to say it but me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yo, I think about this moment so much. It is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to this community. It's a tale that started with the brother feud. And it ended with Brad calling the gentleman a biatch on live air. When I tell you I will never, ever get over this moment. I really mean it because for so many reasons, I'm so emotional. This is like the most important moment of my life. For so many reasons, this was so, so crucial to the growth and future of the FCL because Brad met, like, he's like one of the classiest people I've ever met. And if you knew some behind the scenes, like, we kind of knew what, what could go down and Brad the way he acted like he didn't even he like didn't think it was a big deal that like someone could possibly get pushed 
And then the way, and if you want to know more background about Brad, Brad auditioned or got an audition as a background character for acting. And he had never acted before. And he had like given us his one line. And I'm like, oh, he's not that great. Like what, like, like he's clearly never acted. And then when he heard, when like it all went down and then Brad went into full acting character mode. Like I've never seen someone go zero to hundred that quickly and then finished with calling someone a biot. Oh my God. Oh, sorry. I had to rant. That was, that was so special, Brad. Thank you. I just want to point out, I believe it's the sad baby biot. Oh, the reason God. why I know that directly is you because. sad baby in our official first class league roster, Dwayne has changed Chris's name from Chris the Gentleman to Chris the Sad Baby Biatch Adams. Oh my God. <laughs> Chris probably doesn't even know that, but now he does. I yeah, yeah, I didn't know that either. I look, well, the thing is, I was gonna go full on and cuss him out, but then I was like, oh wait a minute, I don't think we can cuss on the show. Yeah. This is a classy <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In about 0.25 seconds, and so I went with I went with Biatch. That's the only thing I could come up with. At the time. It was the best thing you could have ever done for any of us. That baby Biatch. And then I got a text from Steph, and she was like, you should act. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I actually think that was phenomenal acting. <laughs> yeah, I had a couple moments. I, did, I have a couple moments. Sometimes yeah. I can tap into it. You know what I mean? Sometimes I can tap into it. So that's your number one, but it's really your number three. Yeah. You I know? But actually, I want to say because mine is also a Brad moment. And winning, by the way, of winning. <laughs> Can I be honest? That's my number three as well. <laughs> Can I be honest? My number three. I love the t shirts, Brad. I still love the t shirts. So here's if I can explain that real quick, because I was still trying to figure out the whole. TKO KO thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it not that I didn't know it, but I wasn't sure about the math in the moment. And I don't remember what match. I think what uh was it Matthew? Uh no, uh Matt, I mean not Matthew, Matt Max. Was it Maxwell's match? Something I like that. Remember what match was. Was in. But I was like, wait a minute, did he get knocked out? No, he didn't get knocked out. So this is as I was saying, and your winner by way of and then I was like, oh wait, did he not? Well, uh, <laughs> winning! <laughs> I didn't know where to go with it. And it was live. I didn't know where to go with it. Oh, it was so good. I should have committed to the bit and just been, I mean, committed to the to the, what I was going to say. But I didn't want to be wrong. No, so it's better. My way of winning is correct. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely it's correct. It's not a lie. <laughs> Find the lie. Find it. So that is my num- my number three, Dwayne. What do you got? Uh, my my number three is actually the same as Steph's number three. <laughs> it's when you called Chris a biatch. <laughs> that was my number two, by the way. This happened. Name a moment. No, Brad, you have no idea. I like almost couldn't go back on air. It, I, I, I I I no one ever gets to see me behind the scenes. I lost it. Wait, I I just like luckily a lot of the switching is automated once I push buttons, so I didn't have to focus and I could just laugh, and I was like doubled over laughing in my chair. <laughs> it was so good, Brad. I think it was because I was angry. Like I was angry, I was angry, and then trying to say biatch in an angry way. <laughs> yeah, you were. It was because you were very serious about the word biatch. <laughs> there was no joke in it. Listen here, you little sad baby biatch. Uh, <laughs> my number, my number two, uh, is is more of a moment for for a multitude of reasons. It's not a singular moment, but it's the the entirety of an experience. And that was when we got to do a live broadcast from Scum and Villainy Cantina. Yeah, that's um, mine too. Me, you, and Dwayne were there. That was your number two. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, me, you, and Dwayne were there. It was great. It was just a fun experience to be there with JC, to see the Scum and Villainy Cantina really be the first to do this at the cantina before they started doing matches there. And because we had a great audience, it, not only was Dwayne there, Alex Marzonia was there. Mm-hmm. Reifenberg was there. Roxy Stryer was in the crowd. And uh, the float, Farrah. The float. Beyonce, my fiance. 
Yeah. We, we were all we were all there. And there was a moment where Steph, uh, that's where you called yourself Steve. I mean, Steve. Oh, yeah. Which was great. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you called yourself Steve. Well, if I'm going to go into Steve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Steve. But also, because look, next week we're going to make fun of ourselves a little bit more. Uh, because Steph and I obviously aren't the best at pronouncing things. Uh, I couldn't even pronounce the word right. I just said pronounce. <laughs> you know, Brad and I can't pronounce. For sh- we can't pronounce things. So please stop making fun of us. I wasn't even going to call to it because I thought it was purposeful, but it wasn't. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you can't write this stuff. Oh, God. There is some times where I'm looking at the document and I'm saying, okay, okay. in my head, I'm like, when I know I have the question in it and I'm going to butcher it, I try to prep myself for butchering the, 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 I don't know what I'm about to say. But there are some to where I'm like, I wonder, like as Steph is reading it, if she's going to nail this or not, <laughs> right? And my favorite one of all time was during this broadcast. And it was when the name Ray Fines was coming up. <sighs> and Steph goes, Ralph Fiennes. <laughs> and, and I look over and I'm like, don't sell it. Don't sell it. Don't sell it. And I look over and your friend, the world girl herself, was over there dying laughing at you saying Ralph Fiennes, and I just lost it. Okay, but in my defense, who wrote Ralph? That's, that's, how, it's, that's how it that's smells. How it smelled. That's how it smelled. Who <laughs> wrote ah! <laughs> Ralph? I'm waving a flag. <laughs> who? Name their child. Let me get up for this. Who? Why is your name Ray if there's a PH? L. And an L. Wait, this is not me. This is y'all. This is not me. This is y'all. I I I will. Who wrote Ralph? Yeah, in but in 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 your defense, like I like everyone was like roasting you for that, and I was like. Yo, nice. I was like, y'all, look at how it's spelled. Look at how it's spelled. Oh, it's terribly spelled. It's that's how I knew something was gonna happen. <laughs> it's terribly spelled. <laughs> but that was just such a fun day. Oh. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, it was the first time Steph, you and I met in person. Yeah. It was the first time Roxy and you got to meet the float. Yeah. So, uh, Dwayne, you too, right? That was the first time yeah. you met Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that was a fun moment. So that was your number two, Steph? Yeah. Did you want to add anything to, to No, me? I think you covered it all. <laughs> uh, let's go real quick. We're, at, we're, we're running a little bit behind on time. Yeah. Oh, um, um, PLD, your number two. My two is that baby biatch. It's already good. Oh, oh, right. Your number one, then. Uh, my number one was actually a serious moment to a degree. It was Harley handing the belt off to Flaust. It yeah. set up everything we wanted. It was like kind of the build to that moment. We decided that was going to happen. It was like... This is going to go over so poorly, and I can't wait for it. <laughs> like, I remember today, and it. it was going to be great. And it's not the rest of the season, so it went down the way Harley did it. It was perfectly executed. It went down exactly how I wanted it to go down. That's my number one as well. Dwayne, I don't think you gave us your two yet. I haven't, but that is also my number one. Uh, my yeah. my number two is actually, uh, I mean, it, it was just a, like, it, it's not a funny moment. It was just for me on a production side. It was when you left in the middle of the stream and we had oh, yeah. no idea what was going on. Yeah. And we were just like, well, we got to finish the show. Do I, do I go <laughs> and, on? Do I go on? Do I go on? And, and I was able to like text JP and I was like, hey, JP, I need a Stefan PLD graphic like right now. And he got it to me and we were able to like make it work and we closed out the show and it like it, it it's something that can only happen when the show's live. And like it's one of my favorite moments because we fucking did it. 
like yeah, did it. Pulled it off. And and, yeah. and, I, and I and I told all three of you how how um, thankful I was for y'all because r- real disclosure, I had like a real life family emergency happen on air, like on air. My father was in a surgery, uh, dealing with you know a cardiac issue, and things went awry after post surgery. And my mother was blowing me up, saying, "You need to get down to the hospital." And we're right in the middle of the match. I didn't know what was going on and i just told y'all i gotta go and i just i just literally closed my laptop and i left and i felt bad um but i had to do what i had to do but y'all pulled it off yeah dream team dream team yeah um thank y'all for that so real quick we're gonna do our top three matches because we're running behind time each of us give you give us your three two one yeah we're gonna start with pld third is for inverse for chato for every reason why i said before uh, two Montana versus Fitzsimmons in warfare. Oh my god, so hilarious! Yeah, and finally, Carly versus Kofi. What a oh. match that was! Yeah, I, I, you have two of my similar ones. Same. So let's go to Steph. Yeah, Kofi versus Harley, Montano versus Fitzsimmons, and then JC versus Brennan in this uh Star Wars championship. Oh, JC or Brennan, I love that one because it was just uh, we didn't see it going that way. No, and it's just like Brennan is so damn good, and I think people realized it, but then really realized how good he was because those questions are really hard. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I wouldn't know any of them. Also, one of my favorite moments that I forgot to say is when Furtado wore dressed up as John Knight. I think that's still one of the funniest things that happened in the league. Or when he accidentally dressed the same as Travis Fisher. Oh yeah. That yeah. was a legit coincidence. They showed up wearing the same shirt. Yeah. Where does that happen? And a random shirt at that. It wasn't like right. a, a red. It was like a pumpkins on it and stuff. I was like, it's not like they both wore like a white collared shirt. They had the right. same exact pattern shirt on. Um, Dwayne, your three matches. Uh, my my three uh, third is Abby Crin versus Jared Havon. Match number one. Match number one. Uh, my number two is Nick Harley uh, versus Kofi. Not just because of the match, but the fallout. And then my favorite, which is going to get played a- after this, uh, Andrew Furtado versus John Knight. Okay. So my first favorite, number one, Nick Carley versus Kofi Outlaw. Again, Paul and I didn't even plan for an overtime. And Steph, you were, we were live. I had no idea what I was really doing. We had to call it all on the fly. Yeah. It worked out. And Steph was like, okay, I think I just I just hang back right yeah. now and just to finish. Um, that was a great match. I mean, best match of this year still for me. Second is a tie, both civil wars. So the Adams brothers playing one another and Robert and Vanessa. Yeah. I love both of those equally. Um, and then the third one, and I'm just gonna leave it with the three of you know why. This is a match that I put on here, not so much because it's my favorite match, but Steph, you're always here for the draw, ma. And behind the scenes, my favorite one was <laughs> number three, Aaron Turner versus John Roca in the wrestling. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh man! And that's something we can't talk about. <laughs> but draw, ma. Yo. Yes. Like the way that I don't wish, but also the worst side of me wishes that was aired. <laughs> like it was so intense. So that gets number three on my list for a multitude and a plurality of reasons. Guys, it is now though time. Dwayne Burke talked about it. We're going to play his favorite match from the season. John Knight, the collector, taking on the closer, Andrew Furtado, the real one. Andrew Furtado. We're going to be back next week with also a special uh, spelling bee type event between Steph Sabra and I here on the FCL. Uh, more of that next week. We'll be back. Our final stream of the year will be next week. So don't miss out. Don't get shut out. And for PLD, for Dwayne Burke, for Steph Sabra, I'm the Vote Brad Gilmore. This is the First Class League. We'll see you all next week.